Based off Pascal Siakam's speed off the dribble, ambidextrous finishing slash handle, fluid shooting motion, and his all-around feel for the game, it's obvious the product of New Mexico State was utterly obsessed about improving his game over this past offseason. It may be early, but it's already safe for me to say that, both mentally and physically, Siakam's a different player this year. Whether or not he can keep it up through the 82-game grind and into the postseason is another story, but when you combine the well-rounded scoring of Siakam with the wing-defending, playmaking phenoms in Scotty Barnes and OG Ananobi, you get one of the toughest teams to deal with in the association. Ananobi just set a Raptors record. Another Raptor I haven't even mentioned yet is second among power forwards in three-point percentage. Stay tuned for the details on that and for why the Toronto Raptors' problematic situation is lethal for the association. Before continuing, just 8.5% of you watching are subscribed, so please hit the sub box and turn on notifications so you're updated on NBA analysis like this. Also, please hit the like button to help this video spread. And for channel updates, along with Siaka mixtapes like this, follow at Hoops on Instagram. Thank you greatly for your support. Now into the content. Formerly a soccer player, since picking up a basketball for the first time when he was in his junior year of high school, Siakam's achieved a lot in his hoops career. After redshirting a year in 2014-15, he won the WAC Freshman of the Year at New Mexico State and then averaged over 20 points, 11 boards, and 2 blocks in his sophomore college campaign, winning the WAC Player of the Year. Toronto took him 27th overall in 2016, Siakam won the D-League Championship in 2017, and was D-League Finals MVP. Before he won that minor league finals MVP in Siakam's rookie year in the NBA, he was a fairly raw prospect who was merely a role-playing, complimentary energy guy off the bench. Two years later, he would shock the entire NBA, broke out into an elite caliber two-way weapon, winning most improved player of the year and becoming the second option behind Kawhi Leonard in the Raptors championship run. As Kawhi's Robin against the Golden State Warriors in 2019's NBA Finals, Pascal averaged a Raptors second best 19.8 points per game. In Game 6 of those finals, to seal the title on the road, that included Pascal putting up a 26-point double-double on 70% true shooting, not bad for a championship-clinching game. In his first year as Toronto's number one option, Siakam became a first-time All-Star in 2020. The pandemic changed a lot, and Pascal wouldn't perform up to his capabilities in the bubble. In retrospect, Pascal took an unnecessary amount of hate from the Raptor fanbase and the rest of the NBA universe as the close second round loss to Boston in 2020 could have gone either way and also wasn't fully on Pascal. He was just getting used to being a number one option and played well defensively. The season after that, given the Raptors played their home games in Tampa, Toronto's chemistry didn't set up Pascal or any of the Raptors for success. Fortunately, the first year of somewhat normality, with the Raps being back allowed north of the border, saw Pascal pick up his steady, annual trajectory right where he left it. Signifying the next step he'd take, 2021-22's campaign saw Siakam make the All-NBA third team. However, as I mentioned last video, in last spring's playoffs, Siakam's stats didn't elevate from the regular season. That's likely why Siakam put in endless hours of smart, passionate reps both in the weight room and between the lines this offseason. Siakam was dominating everyone in this summer's Rico Hines runs, clips which were posted all over social media. Now we see that the hype stirred up by fans reacting to those videos of Pascal was legit, as this man's translated the flow he developed during the highly intense regular 5-on-5 five -five workouts in LA to the current season we're in. We're about to get to the film on the improved weapons that have been most beneficial to Pascal, but the reason why we just looked at his career trajectory is because I find it amazing how this man's gone from an end of the bench player who was up and down from the development league and slowly but surely modified his skill set throughout the years to the point where you could now argue he's a top 5 to 10 player in basketball. Through 8 games, Pascal's 25.6 point averages come on a true shooting clip of 56.7%. He's taken four and a half triples per game and made 36.1% of them. He's averaging a near triple double of 26, 10, and 8. So Pascal's providing value in every facet for this deeply talented Raptor squad. His shooting, whether from the mid range or from deep, fused together with his downhill attacking, allows him to produce offense by simply mixing it up, which keeps defenders off balance. 
Last video, we evaluated Pascal's passing chops, but today I wanted to focus on the improvements he's made to his handle, shot creation, and defense. Siakam's improved first step makes him tough to hold in front of in the first place, but that danger is now multiplied with his polished, more decisive ability to attack to his left hand. Even just his left-handed dribbling is a lot better. Garland knows that's been an issue with Siakam in the past and presses up in the backcourt, but a momentum cross to his offhand gets him past Garland and results in Toronto's best pure shooter in Gary Trent Jr. getting a transition three. Notice how Siakam's body language baits first step to his right, and also how he attacks directly before Coloco gets there for the pick, for an explosive attack to his left. Collins still keeps up, and while Siakam may have panicked as a younger player in this situation, he just drops his shoulder to force Collins into an awkward stance, and spins back to his right for the teardrop. Off those patented attacks where he drives to his left and spins back to his strong side, Siakam's getting a ton of elevation to finish over defenders directly in his grill. This between the legs momentum cross to his offhand and Hezzy fools Collins so much that Pascal has time to go back to his right hand on the left side. Using that offensive leverage, here Capella assumes Pascal's going left, but watch this in and out move, up fake, and spinning pivot off his right foot for the Dirk Nowitzki-esque fadeaway while drifting into the lane. More offense coming up, but Siakam's top 10 in defensive rating at his position and his 7 foot 4 wingspan and activity show up on plays like this, where he strips Collins, rotates onto Hunter, and funnels DeAndre into the excellent help of Coloco. Next, DeAndre sizes up Pascal and drives into his triple threat move, but Siakam maintains sound positioning, not touching DeAndre with his hands, gluing himself to Hunter, and knocking the ball off him. More improved than his off-handed ability is Siakam's under control and crafty bucket hunting bag. Obviously, Siakam's always had his reach advantage on the perimeter, but he significantly polished his array of slashing tools. Momentum crossovers, Beyblade spins, and line drive attacks are complemented with an also improved mix of masterful pull-up slash step-back jump shooting fundamentals. Just like his friend and former teammate Kawhi Leonard, while Siakam's very different than Kawhi, Pascal's at his best when he's meshing and more crucially competing for the four other players around him at any given time. The collective offensive IQ of the Raptors is extremely sound, and Siakam's the biggest beneficiary of that. In an executed out-of-bounds play, despite the experience Justin Holiday being right there for a solid closeout, Siakam comes off the weak side pin down and pristinely follows through for the spot-up deep-range bomb. Very next play Nurse draws up for him comes out of a horns action with Pascal cutting off the ball, which sees Trent Jr. set a perfect back screen and Pascal catch both the Hawks sleeping and the pass from OG for the and one. That shows you both the cohesion between the Raptors coaching staff and personnel. After faking the downhill attack, as nobody switches on to him in this high pick and roll with Kem Birch, slight fake contested shots where the defender sags off and jumps used to bother Siakam when he shot jumpers from distance off the dribble. That's likely how the Spurs' individual scouting report told their players to defend him, but Siakam's one-two step into these kind of pull-ups is different this year. At least it seems that way. McDermott's forced to switch on to him here. Siakam starts to his improved left hand and straight up breaks McDermott's ankles, who still somewhat recovers, but again, 22-23 Siakam isn't phased by slight contests. Ben Simmons learns that lesson as Siakam gets him leaning with a combo and pulls up from 20 feet. Next, the Spurs choose to initially sag off, but even the smallest step forward from Bates Diop gives Siakam enough confidence to attack the lead foot as he spicily goes double between the legs crossover, normal cross left, between the legs cross right, hesitation dribble, and shoulder down attack for the bucket. Wrapping up the film room for Siakam, his second triple double of the year in one of two for the Raps down in Texas, saw him show off his improved postgame, featuring polished drop steps, developed fadeaways, and one to two dribble faceups. If I had to pinpoint one thing about Pascal that's led to his improvement, it's the quickness and confidence in his attacks to the rim. Here, he makes the seven foot monster Gorgi Zhang look small by just bodying him out of the way for the and one. Also look how small he makes PJ Tucker look on this play. To wrap things up, he's got to avoid ugly. Overall, nothing stops Siakam if he's healthy and playing for his teammates. This video was recorded before Toronto takes on the Mavericks in Dallas on Friday night. 
but the Raptors' last two games as of right now have seen them beat their opponents in the Atlanta Hawks and San Antonio Spurs, two plus 500 teams, at least for the time being, by a combined 73 points. Big time contributors that I'm aware haven't got enough credit in this video are Gary Trent Jr., who a separate video could be made on, along with OG Ananobi and Scotty Barnes. Film on the defense of Scotty and OG is something I could put together as well. Of course, there's other teams across the league to cover, but the Raps are damn intriguing right now. Speaking of Ananobi, he just became the first Raptor of all time to snatch five steals in back-to-back -back games. OG rightfully just called himself the best defender in the NBA, and there's genuine proof of that in the fact that he ranks number one among all small forwards in defensive rating. Meanwhile, rising sophomore Scotty Barnes, who's playing extremely motivated right now, is ninth best at his respective position in defensive rating. More than living up to the hybrid of Paul George and Giannis I once compared him to, Scotty's actually a better passer than either of those two. But the reason I gave Barnes that hybrid in a video I made back in the summer is because his mix of slashing and perimeter smoothness is very similar to Giannis and Paul. He missed one game due to an ankle injury but tried to fight through it initially despite going down in pain against Miami. This kid can't stand missing games and his passion for basketball is what's ultimately going to drive his greatness more than anything. Scotty's attention to detail show up in his persistence and fun-loving nature to pick up the ball full court. As I've said in the past, this man genuinely enjoys clamping up anyone who steps in front of him and it's refreshing to watch. Chris Boucher is also refreshing to watch as the stretch center has been dominant since returning to the lineup, proving he's a vital piece to this Raptors system. Boucher is currently second in three-point percentage among power forwards and is averaging an important 11.8 points, 4.8 rebounds, and 1.2 blocks in just 19.4 minutes per game. Boucher's true shooting percentage in 22-23 is at a blistering 75.5%. Going back to Siakam, why or why not will he keep this production up? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top 5 commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's speaks winners are firstly TJ Views, who says I think they can go 10-0, because I think the way they're playing, they can win a lot of games this year, they have a great team, and even though they don't have Chris Middleton, they know how to play like a team and will continue to win a lot of games. They can certainly win a title this season. And secondly, to Logical Raptors Fanatic, who says Ko No No is who I'm most excited about for the Raptors. His foot speed and length will terrorize the league for years. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.